Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has previously praised cyber operations, especially big data and AI, as the future of warfare. Between big data, connectivity and artificial intelligence, we have vast opportunities. But the most famous form of cyber warfare is Pegasus, a spyware created by Israeli company NSO Group that can be remotely installed on mobile phones without their users knowing. NSO Group was founded by former members of Unit 8200, Israel's military cyber warfare unit. It has been used to spy on foreign heads of state from France to South Africa and has also been sold to foreign governments to spy on opposition politicians, journalists and activists from Hungary to India to the Gulf states, including Middle East Eye's Turkey bureau chief Ragib Solyu. Reports from 2021 claim that the spyware was used in over 40 countries. Pegasus enabled governments to collect intelligence on chosen targets, whether by secretly recording them or accessing their devices' data, such as conversations or photos. As a result, authoritarian governments could more easily target and repress civil society figures. Despite Pegasus becoming a global scandal, Israel's Unit 8200 made headlines again just months ago for its use of AI targeting in Gaza via its lavender system. Soldiers enter information collected via mass surveillance of Gaza's population into a system that ranks people's likelihood of being a militant based on certain features, such as whether they're on certain WhatsApp groups or change addresses or phones frequently. It generated nearly 40,000 targets just in the first weeks of the war. They then combine this with a system called Where's Daddy, which notifies soldiers when a target enters his home. The building is then bombed, killing the target along with his entire family. 972 Mag later reported that Israel's army stores much of this data using Amazon, Microsoft or Google, aiding its military operations in Gaza. which candidate would be better for their interests. Thankfully, Republican candidate Donald Trump held a rally in New York on Sunday that helps us answer that question. From Palestine to immigration to jihad, speakers shared their interesting and colorful opinions on the Middle East. First up was disgraced former mayor of New York, Rudy Giuliani's assertion that Palestinians are indoctrinated into terrorism from birth. And the Palestinians are taught to kill us at two years old. They won't let a Palestinian in Jordan. They won't let a Palestinian in Egypt. And Harris wants to bring them to you. They may have good people, I'm sorry I don't take a risk with people that are taught to kill Americans at two. Donald Trump's on the side of Israel and they're on the side of the terrorists. Next was Trump's transition team chief, Howard Lutnick, who had a slightly different take on what Trump's policy priority would be. Lutnick really spoke so eloquently to those kitchen table issues worrying American voters this election. You know, the top classics grocery prices, mortgage payments, and jihad. So the first thing, we must elect Donald J. Trump president because we must crush jihad. September 11 was our darkest hour. October 7 was Israel's darkest hour. They are our best friend. I worked for Ronald Reagan for eight years. Ronald Reagan said, we have to be there for Israel always because they are always there for us. Hamas is not there for us. Iran is not there for us. They want to kill us. And the Palestinians are taught to kill us at two years old. They won't let a Palestinian in Jordan. They won't let a Palestinian in Egypt. And Harris wants to bring them to you. They may have good people. 
I'm sorry I don't take a risk with people that are taught to kill Americans at two. I'm on the side of Israel. You're on the side of Israel. Donald Trump's on the side of Israel. And they're on the side of the terrorists. And I think part of it is that Hamas did not care about a homeland for the Palestinians. They wanted to kill Israelis and make Israel uninhabitable. Well, I got news for them. They were there first. Before there was their faith existed, they were there. In the time of King David, in the southernmost tribes had Judea and Samaria. Hello, good people. It's Rob Lee. I'd like to do a little preaching and teaching here for you today about the coming show and the deceit, the election deceit, and what's going to happen Tuesday. And even it's already starting now. When you hear about lawsuits already being filed, ballot boxes being set on fire, you see the groundwork. The foundation of this civil disorder is being laid. Now, after watching those videos, when you look at somebody like Rudy Giuliani, when you see the evil in this creature, his tongue flicking like a snake, and the gross lies he tells, these people are here for one reason. One reason. Their sole purpose is to deceive the masses and take them as far as possible away from the truth. You see, that's what, that's what they're here for. That's what they were born for. People don't understand God makes it clear. Some people are born evil. Mean, means they don't get better. When you hear Bill Clinton talking, Bill Clinton, Rudy Giuliani, they're both in their 80s, half dead, ready to die. They're going to be evil until the very end. They came into the world evil. Psalm 58.3, natural born liars. 
Their goal was to take you away from the truth, to deceive. And the truth is Jehovah Father and his glorious son, Jesus. It's not about America with these people. It's about the state of Israel, the synagogue of Satan. There's no mention of the people who have been displaced and are living in tents because their homes and apartments are now rubble. There will be no mention about the bombing of hospitals, churches, schools, apartment buildings, graveyards, orphanages, and the killing of members of the press. No. However, God your Father and Jesus sees everything. There is nothing that happens that Father does not know about. Jesus said that not a sparrow hits the ground that your Father does not know about. Jesus said even the very hairs of your head are numbered. Nothing takes place on this earth that your Father and Jesus does not know about. When Almighty Father was talking to the serpent in the Garden of Eden, he said there would be two seeds. Genesis 3.15 3, says this, and this is God speaking to the serpent. And I will put enmity, enmity's hatred, between thee, talking to the serpent, and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Two seeds. The Lord hath made all things for himself. Yeah, even the wicked for the day of evil. Proverbs 16, 4. Even the wicked for the day of evil. And then you have their followers. The followers. Many of them have good intentions, but their intentions are not of God. So you can have the best of intentions and you may get up and think that you're on the side of right, but your intentions are not of God because Jesus said either you do the Father's will or you don't. Jesus said either you're with me or you are against me. Matthew twelve thirty, and we're going to read it. But there's a reason why white people feel the way they do. And they have reason to feel it. But let's talk about the followers. The followers of these evil people. And one of the most powerful verses in the entire Bible, Jesus is talking to the Jews. And he says this to them in Matthew chapter 23, verse 15. He says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you compass sea and land to make one proselyte, proselyte's follower. And when he is made, you make him twofold more of the child of hell than yourselves. You see, these are, these are the followers. These politicians do not care about Americans. They care about the synagogue of Satan and its headquarters in Jerusalem. You see the masses cheering, they wave flags, they shout Trump, and they support Israel. You will not hear any mention of Jesus, although you will occasionally see signs that say God or Jesus. Occasionally. In fact, at the Trump rally in New York, somebody held up a sign that said, Worship Jesus. But they had on a red MAGA hat. MAGA means witch. If you're worshiping Jesus, if you're worshiping the one true God and he gave you Jesus, why would you be there? And many people will say, but doesn't it say in the Bible, Rob, that God said that we should, uh, that we should obey all of our leaders? People who say this, and this is in the book of Romans, you're not exercising any discernment. What if they told you tomorrow by the logic of these people, and this is actually taught in church, to go along, along with what the leaders say. What if they told you tomorrow to murder your neighbor? And what if, they, what if they told you, hey, go ahead and do it. Would you follow it? Well, see, by their logic, just because the leaders say it, it means that we should do it. This is nonsense. You're not going to hear any mention from any of these people of the children that have been brutally murdered and starved to death. What about when it comes here? Now, the scenario may be different. But what are these people going to do when they can't feed their children? Don't have no place to stay. No, you might not be bombed. You just don't have a place. You don't have no power. You don't have no food. As sure as I'm telling you this, Almighty Father Jehovah will bring it to this nation and all white Western nations. But why do white people feel the way they do? No matter who is selected Tuesday, there will be no winner. The stage is set for civil disorder and maybe worse. You see, the lights are in place. The stage has been built and the show was going to begin. The clowns will come to you 24-7 with breaking news, new results, lawsuits, riots, protests. The Trump people have not been rioters in the past. 
Now, January 6th was a show. It was a skit by the enemy, not by the Trump people. Now, I don't defend the Trump people much. They had nothing to do with January the 6th. Yes, many of them gathered. Yes, yes. But what happened had nothing to do with them. It was an inside job. However, as I said, these people are angry and hurt. They see America ruined. Their hopes and all they have is in Donald Trump and the state of Israel. The Trump people are capable of revolting too. But let me say a word about these Trump people, most of whom are white, and it's okay to be white. It's still okay to be white. The subject of race and racism is only acceptable to talk about if it's telling white people how bad you are, then it's, it is acceptable. It's a good thing to talk about if you can point the finger at white people and say, you're the blame for everything. You did it all. You did it all. You're to blame for everything and every non-white race on this earth. You're the blame for it all. This is actually God's punishment to, to the true Israelites. That everybody's coming against you. White nations have seen their ways of life removed and replaced right before their eyes. I mean, in Germany, in Europe, in the United Kingdom, I mean, you have to understand, if you know your history just a little bit, these were all white nations. I mean, what do you think it was like? What do you think the ancestors in ancient England would say when Rishi Sunak was the prime minister of the United Kingdom? And people say, well, you're being racist. I don't care what people say. I speak God's truth. They don't care about God because they, they don't have God in them. To be of God, you have to have a spirit of God. Romans 8.14. So white nations have seen people come from all over the earth to their nations and then want to take over their nations. This is a reality. We've talked about it many times. And who is actually behind it? White people are told to be ashamed of who they are, even little children. Ashamed of the way God made you. Psalms 139, God chose the place for you, for you to be born. He knew you before you were born, if you are his. How can you be ashamed of the way God made you, unless you're doing evil? Every person and every race is told to be proud. Your culture, your heritage, except white people. The history of white people has been erased from books and replaced with false history. Even right now, you have a people that is cursed by God, that Jesus called the children of the devil, pretending to be God's chosen. The enemy has worked, these same people, the synagogue of Satan has worked 24-7, demoralizing and annihilating the self-esteem and confidence of white people. So when you see the Trump people, they have reason to get upset anti-white propaganda has become so so acceptable that most people just see it as it's just a part of life and that white people deserve it. So I understand the anger and hurt that many white people feel. Folks have lost jobs, homes, apartments, businesses, insurance, and more. They're paying twice for food than just four years ago. Food is twice what it used to be. Everything is going up, and it keeps going up. It's not stopped. You all know this because you go to the stores. You have to eat. You have to live. Everything is going up. So the Trump people are tired of hearing that a man can be a woman, a woman can be a man. They're tired of hearing how bad they are, and that every other race is noble and the victims of white people. So this propaganda has taken its toll. Now, when you see all this hate toward white people, who do you see at the forefront of all this hate, of all this hatred? It's other white people. Now, sure, there are many races and cultures that are anti-white, but the hit of the beast is white. Now, all this takes its toll on people. And they run to anyone and anything for help, but they don't run to the truth. They believe they can put their faith in men, and even worse, they believe that loving the devil's children is from God. They don't even know their enemy as the devil's children. They have been taught and programmed to believe they're God's chosen. America will be broken. I don't think it, I know it. 
One of those waves that we've spoken about so often is coming to shore soon. The United States had it made after World War II. In the summer of 1945, going into the fall of 1945, into, into the winter of 1946, there stood but one nation on God's earth that had everything going for it. Every other nation was broken, battered, and beat up. All the other powers had been bled dry by World War II and even taken hostage, except for the United States. All the United States had to do was keep its entire love on Jesus, and they would have been a beacon of light for all nations. But just as other white nations that stem from the ancient Israelites, they denied the one true God, they denied his son Jesus, and have taken up with those that are evil and are contrary to God. If you read the scriptures, and I'm reading the Old Testament now, you see these same people walk away from God, walk away from God, walk away from God, and you see what happens to them every time. The United States is the whore, the harlot, the prostitute for the state of Israel. It's the harlot who sells all she has. She steals from her own family to give to her abusing pimp, who then beats her up, disrespects her and shames her, and she keeps giving to him. That's the United States, and its pimp is the six-pointed star that what your father, think about it, your father called that star, that hexagram, the star of the devil. White folks just wave it. Look, whoo, we're so proud as you wave the star of the devil that God condemned. You don't think white, white folks have lost their way, man? Or how about when you see white folks on the internet? Bible's wrong. God got it wrong. Uh, Jesus, that, that's not even his name. They know more than God, and they truly believe it. They watched a uh, an article. They watched a, a video on BitChute, Rumble, YouTube. They know more than God. Surely they do. They've created. They've healed. They've wounded. They've made alive. They've done it all. They've done nothing. But they know more than God. Have, law, have white people lost their way? Is putting on a red hat and shouting Israel and Trump, is that going to make it better? Hell no. It's going to make it worse. Yet I tell you, God's will is being done. The United States is 40 million, four, excuse me, 40 trillion in debt that we know of. That's just what we know of. And all these, where do you think all these trillions went? Folks, they went across the ocean to a little bitty tiny nation. Most of it did. Each day, the United States must borrow roughly 35 billion just to break even, just to have enough to do what it, has, what it has to do each day. Jewish owned banks have made America its harlot. And now America is broken. Yet she keeps calling out to her abusive pimp. She will not cry out to God the Father in the name of Jesus. Cry out and beg, Father, help us. In the name of Jesus, help us. And what a wonderful, loving God and Father we had that he would help. But 99.999% of this nation, they don't want God. They don't want Jesus. They don't want the whole holy word. They want everything but, and your father said, you can have it. Many are called, but few are chosen. And now we see Russia, China, Iran, India, and Brazil, just to name a few, Indonesia, are leaving the United States and Western nations in their wake. The United States is not the big superpower that it once was. It did rule the world. It really did. And there, and, and folks, it wasn't even close. Yeah, we talk about the USSR. Listen, it wasn't even close. This is punishment from God. Americans, Europeans, and Nordic countries have become the equivalent of the man or woman who wakes up at 4 o'clock in the morning and there are intruders going through their house and they've got weapons and they're, and they're there to hurt and to take. And the family wakes up and they, they ask the intruders, the intruders, have you seen anybody trying to break into our home? This is how delusional white people have become. 
They will befriend murderers, thieves, rapists, and liars while looking in the other direction for intruders that are not there. People have gone astray. They worship men and false gods when there is only one God and he gave us his son, Jesus. Judges 10, 14, the words of your father to these same people, then and now. Go and cry unto the gods which ye have chosen. Let them deliver you in your time of tribulation. Throughout history, men have always forsaken the one true God and put their faith in false gods and men. I talk to my father and Jesus always, and one of the things we've discussed is how incredibly great the lies are. I mean, it is mind-blowing to me sometimes to see how big the lies are. I mean, it's just so many people living and making the lie. Jesus said when he returned, would he find any faith? This didn't mean he wouldn't find some loyal children. What he was saying is when he returns in, the, in, the, in those days of tribulation that's growing, firm, that, gr growing worse, that faith in our Father will be very, very small. It doesn't matter what happens November 5th. Jehovah and Jesus are still on the thrones in heaven, and your Father's will is always going to be done. Evil has but one function. This is to take people from the truth. Throughout Scripture, as I said, we see father's children going astray and follow those that are evil and those who make the lie. The words of Jesus in the last book of the Bible, the last chapter, Revelation twenty two fifteen, the words of Jesus, talking about who's going to enter the holy city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie, a lie. I'm going to repeat this again because it's important. So Jesus is getting ready to be murdered by the Jews who have kidnapped him, taken him hostage, and they're going to murder him. Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor, actually wanted to let him go. He was scared. His wife had came to him and said, release that man. He's a just man. She, he, she even told him, I've had dreams about that man. She knew he was something different. You see, Jesus was, just wasn't your typical man. He was, he was anything but. So Pilate and Jesus had this exchange, and to me, it may be as powerful as anything in the entire scripture. And remember, what words did, did Jesus speak? The words of his father. And whose father is it? Your father and my father. This is what Jesus says to Pilate. John eighteen thirty seven. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Everyone that is of the truth heareth the voice of Jesus. Everyone that is of the truth heareth the voice of Jesus, and nobody else. I don't care if there's a thousand religions. It means dog dung to me. Nothing. If it ain't Jesus, it don't count. Jesus says he is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but by him. See John 14, 6. If it's not Jesus, it's a complete lie. Because where did Jesus come from? He said, I came not to do my own will. I came to do the will of my Father. The words that I speak, they're the words of my Father. The, the works that I do, they're the works of my Father, for he lives in me. And where does the Father and Jesus live in us? Right here with us, inside of us. There are people that live among you, near you, and maybe in your own home that are evil. Some are born evil. Some decide and choose to be evil. Now this fact is shunned by the churches like all other truths. Let me read something to you. And I'm going to paraphrase it because for, for, for whatever reason, and sometimes we all struggle, I, I, I certainly do, when we read scripture, sometimes we struggle to get the meaning of it. I certainly have, even just yesterday, and I'm sure that I will tonight, this morning when I read the scriptures. We all do. This is in Romans 9, and we're going to get ready to close here. Romans 9, verses 21 through 23. Listen carefully. Hath not the potter, which is God, power over the clay, which is creation, of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor, 
That means he took some and said, these are mine. Because God said he knew you before you were born of a woman. He knew you before you were born of a woman. You know how deep that is? God knew you before you came from your mother. And another unto dishonor. So here is Paul saying, the potter, God, has power over the clay creation. One to honor. They're, they belong to God. Another unto dishonor. They're anti-God. They're anti-you. They're evil. What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering? It means patience. The vessels of wrath fitted to destruction means they were created to be evil. That he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, you, his children, which he had afore prepared unto glory. You see, some are born evil. Matthew 15, 13, But he answered and said, Every plant which my father, my heavenly father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Jesus answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Not everything belongs to the father. There are his children. A man had many sheep. A sheep is a beautiful and meek animal. There's nothing like a lamb. It's beautiful. It's meek. It's soft. It's gentle. And this man has tens of thousands of acres. He's a sheep farmer. The man knew every one of his sheep. He kept track of them. Not a single one went unaccounted for. Sometimes a sheep would go astray and get lost. They had strayed and lost their way. It happens. They knew to cry out to their shepherd, and he would come for them. Friends, our Father in Jesus loves us very much. We call out and cry out to them, and they'll always come and get us. We do not know the depths of their love for us. How can we? As, except to know that it's greater than we can possibly understand. And we can't love them anywhere near as much as they love us. You cry out to your shepherd. No matter what it is, you cry out, I need help. Come get me. What a loving God we have, man. What a wonderful master and savior we have in Jesus who is a part of the Father. You didn't walk out of Africa. You're not an accident. You didn't come from sludge. You didn't come from evolution. You were created by God Almighty, and he knew you before you came from a woman. Matthew 10, 32. As, as we close. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. See, Jesus is telling you, do you confess him? Totally. Totally. It's you, Jesus. It's you, Jesus. And there's nobody else. There's you, Jesus, and nobody else. And I'll say it to anybody. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Matthew 12, 30. He, the words of Jesus again. He that is not with me is against me. He that is not with me is against me. And he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. Means that either you're doing the will and the work of Jesus, you're a part of that, or you hurt, or, or you take away from it. There's no middle ground. So you can't have one foot in the kingdom and one foot in the world and think that you're doing the will of God because you're not. You're either 100% in with Jesus or you are 100% out. There's no 50-50. There's no 80-20 nonsense. 100% in or 100% out. Who's the boss of it? Matthew 28, 18, the words of Jesus, the son of the one true God, Jehovah Father, who sits at the right hand of the one true Father. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Do not become but so emotionally invested in the theater and goings on in this world. For it's all the means to the Father's end. Yes, we are living in the last days. Your help your love, your strength, your courage, your everything, your food, your shelter, your water, your lights has always been your Heavenly Father. 
And he said, it goes through my son, Jesus. You pray for all you need and never be shy about asking for anything. You have, your God is more wonderful than what you know. And you call out to him. You call out to your shepherd and say, I need help. Come get me. Jesus said, I'll never, I'll never forsake you. I'll never leave you. You see, when everybody else walks away from you, Jesus Christ is still there. And we just got through reading, who's the boss of it all? Jesus said, all power is mine. And all these people pretending to be powerful and they have this and they have that. It's because God allows them to have a few little minutes throughout time to have some power. And they believe they really are powerful. Surely God laughs at such folly. Surely he laughs at it. When men believe it, they actually have power. Go in quiet and private. Pray and talk to your father and Jesus. Ask for anything you need. Trust them, love them, and hold on to them as we see the evil in this world destroyed. Pray for one another. Pray for one another. To the sisters who have reached out to me, who have called me and I've missed your calls, to the sister in Idaho who helped me with the cats, I thank you, Leslie. I thank you, dear. I appreciate it. To my sister in Michigan, I haven't forgot about you, darling. To my sister in, in California that called, I haven't forgot about your sister. And to my sister in Canada that is ill, I pray for you, dear. I always will. I haven't forgot about any of you. To my brother in Florida who's moving maybe to another country, I pray for you, man. I want it to be good for you. To my brother in Washington State, to my brothers and sisters in Germany and Scotland, to my brothers and sisters in the South and the North, I love all of you because we're one family. And we're all having to walk that last mile. And it's not a mile anymore. It's more like a quarter mile. I thank you for being here with us today. And you keep praying in the name that is above all names. For the name that is above every name in heaven and in earth. That your, your father said this name is even more precious than my own. If your father's name is Jehovah, and it certainly is, Isaiah 26, 3 and 4. And why don't you read Isaiah 26, 3 and 4? Why don't you open up your scriptures when this video is over, this preaching's over, and read it? But he said, even above my own is the name of my son. His name is Jesus, and it has the greatest of power. You pray for everything in Jesus' name. I thank you for being here. Amen.